Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new review. Behind us is the new Fabia. This is the test car. I'm going to do point of view driving with no talking day and night separated point of view. Night point of view, excuse me, uh, with full impressions on the road. I wanted to show you this package. Uh, it's also styled but a little bit different interior details and infotainment. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump into the review. Okay, ladies and gents, uh, new Fabia fourth generation and with a brand new color orange metallic color and it looks very very elegant i think this is my next favorite color on the skoda to be honest now this is the style package uh 1.0 tsi 110 horsepower six speed manual just like in the salon even same alloys but uh different color and we have the upgraded led headlights uh, same key, so we're just gonna unlock it. Uh, if you haven't saw my salon video, I'm gonna link it on the top So make sure to watch that first and then come back to this video and we'll continue on Okay, so uh, once you did that, let's come a little bit closer show you the Skoda crystal lighting In this case you have the daytime running light on the bottom. It turns into a turn signal. You have the uh, lens on the top and then you have the projector and a little projector on the side as well uh, fogs are on the bottom so I would definitely recommend these they look way better there's gonna be occasional traffic uh, but uh, the car uh, looks now a lot better I really like this color I know I've already said that but I just it's very nice and I've had some of the direct messages people asking me uh, and yes, this color is available uh, even on Skoda Octavia, and I think it's going to look really good, especially with the black details, if you expect, like, the Sport line. This is also going to be very interesting if they're going to offer it in the Monte Carlo. Now, you might have noticed the side mirrors are not folding, and for some reason, uh, I think this is one of the early production cars, so they didn't have the folding mirrors, although it's standard. Um... But that's it. Uh, the car is wider, longer, a little bit shorter than the previous model. I mentioned that in my previous model uh, review. And uh, just a detail, really nice uh, side tunneling on the sides for better aerodynamics. Driving, uh, well, the car really drives very good. And wow, just this color is so amazing looking. Look at this. There are no filters in this video. This is just what you see. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Um, but it is one for the thumbnail. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, this car is quite comfortable, 16 inch alloys. And, um, I like the driving. It's very good. More of that, uh, in my night point of view review. Although I think the soundproof isn't that good as on the new Polo. But that's something they can work out. Everything else really feels solid. And it's a good little car. Now, uh, cargo space. Uh, now, I thought there were LED lights. I can't remember off the top of my head. When I was in Swiss in uh, Zurich, I think there were optional full LEDs. Maybe they didn't spec them on this model. Now, uh, cargo space is very practical. It's a little bit different packed. In this model so that's the reason i wanted to show it to you uh 380 liters have in mind this is what golf has so the new polo has a little bit less i forgot i think it was three oh, i'm gonna be lying now 350 or something now i think it less i think it was less but i can't remember from the top of my head now uh, but this is very practical for such a small city hatchback now what's different here is besides my backpack here and the uh, thing on the left here is the creation, like a first aid emergency triangle and uh, spare bulbs. So um, you get this uh, double uh, side, like a textile in a uh, rubber. I would definitely recommend this. And you can fit here a fire extinguisher, mandatory for company cars at least in Croatia, and you get this, look at this. Now this is some sort of um, like an add-on from Škoda, so you can like hook this here as well, it doesn't have to be necessarily on both 
looks and look at this this is a Shakota umbrella but something appears to be wrong what's this so let me just put my backpack in so this is an add-on and uh it's something definitely looks wrong with it but uh let me demonstrate it for you so just a moment take that off and let's show you the umbrella I have to use a little force there There's some bus pressing by so i have to use both hands but uh what happens is let me see if i can get this with my one hand if i actually i'm gonna like pull it here so i can there you go hold it off and then you go then you clicks look at this so you see that there's like bottom part that just flips and then it have like a classical umbrella but it has this mechanism completely different and you gotta press the little button and it comes back by itself so very practical i do apologize about the traffic i know it's loud it just sometimes there's no traffic here sometimes it just keeps going and not really i can do not a lot i can do about it because it just sometimes it's busy some hours sometimes it's not it's completely random um anyways i've covered all the details in my salon video so if you want to see that um uh, check it out uh on this car i'm going to be brief um yes this is factory and this is factory so this is metallic orange and metallic black uh, besides this parts are piano black B pillar and the uh, end on the C pillar now this is how the car looks when it's a little bit dirty I like the design of these alloys I really do because this is a cover plastic and then there's an actual alloy it gives a little bit more aerodynamic um, the polo base polo didn't have the uh, start stop button or the uh, keyless entry which is kind of disappointing because it costs almost the same as this style fabia it's like the higher package now um i've showed you in the salon i'm just gonna check here I haven't really checked okay so on the rear here in this car everything is the same but you have the optional two usbs on the back uh, everything else is exactly the same as the car in the salon so i'm not going to be jumping on the back And then on the front, I really do recommend these uh, Škoda rubber uh, all-weather floor mats. They're quite good design-wise, although they're not, they would be a little bit better if they had a, like this little bit taller sides. My Octavia uh, ones original had that. Okay, so inside, so separate video is gonna be point of view driving of this beauty and zooming back in so this one has the optional digital cockpit and uh, just a detail so this one as mentioned doesn't have the oh something's wrong with the camera just a second okay so better it just starts uh, having some filigree after switching from wide back to normal lens so as you can see the other one had folding this one doesn't I don't know if it's from the shortage usually early production models are a little bit different but then after a few months they just um, kind of create all the packages they want and we are also noticing the screen here doesn't have the physical buttons it is a little bit uh, bigger diagonal uh, so a little bigger screen but uh, i'm going to show you here the differences in this car so i won't be uh, too long and but i was saying so i don't want to advertise anyone but it's pretty obvious which company this is uh, so this bottom end fits into this one so just for example this is an ashtray you get or something else so over here well this is in the way the armrest but if you would want it to unscrew this oh it's spinning but put it in here and then, actually, I was pushing it for the wrong side, I think. Actually, wait. Yeah, easier with this hand, although I'm right-handed. 
there you go so you can unscrew this and screw it back because the bottom is in position it's not spinning so there we go um be nice if coca-cola would now actually pay me some money for using their bottle to demonstrate this feature but uh whatever um there's no advertisement in this video this is not being paid uh i just bought it because i was uh, thirsty and then i thought it might be uh, good to show it actually in practice and um okay start stop things boot up and i gotta get this boring message with data protection gdpr uh faces quite elegant i'm gonna come back to this one let's check this one first sharpness of this one is way better than this one so uh we have here on the side fuel and the temperature on the left we have the range we have the consumption so my consumption was around six liters it was going like towards five but then uh this is mostly highway driving around um, 100 130 uh, i'll see if i have time today to do a consumption test because i have to return the car by six and i want to film the night nice review so i think i'm going to be a little bit short with the time but i think this car could get good consumption if you're gentle something around five liters um and i would definitely recommend go for the 110 horsepower six speed manual not five like on the 95 horsepower version but i would personally go for the automatic speed uh excuse me automatic uh dsg7 speed now um let's see customizations so you can use this little button here and you can switch through the screens and then it gives you this classical view it gives you this and it gives you this and then it comes back to the uh like more simplified or the classical like this looks like some sort of sport version i uh, notice this car doesn't have the uh, driving modes like the one in the salon did now uh, i'm in a like a blank zone there's no signal because i'm in, on the <laughs> under a hill there's like a uh, just spot with no signal so that's why it's trying to connect here we show you apple carplay that i have connected at the moment and what's interesting is <clears throat> Once you choose this one, it just kind of switches off the sides, which is kind of cool. So you can customize, okay, here you can have a lane assist, cruise control, and speed limiter, front assist. That's pretty cool. And then you can have your driving data. And then you spin this wheel. Uh, so you can have warning at, come a little bit closer, warning at, oil temperature, trip, consumption, overview, Huh, overview of what oh okay and actually no just the back so you press this one or you roll it and then if you roll it it gives you these options so personally i like to have it at speed and then if you um, press on it speed okay let me just Okay, now when you press on it, then you use the little ones uh, on the bottom and you play with the assist. Um, over here, lane assist, cruise control. So that's what we saw on the side. And then if we go here, audio phone. So I guess this would, uh, well, require to turn on the infotainment. Now it shows you the radio station and turns on the, um, the little uh, avatar. If the station has that one and here phone vehicle status uh, have a good journey well thank you and um and then driving data uh, i'm not 100 percent sure if you can change the uh sides here well there's a like the radio but it's not loading the uh, i can see the the tile but it's not loading the station and it's kind of weird you have speed here and here I mean, if you choose the speed in the middle, then you have it both ways. But if you don't, then you have it always on the side over there on the bottom. And um, this is kind of cool. Let me just see here if you go. 
Now, in this one, it doesn't allow you to. Oh, wait. Ooh, look at that. So, uh, once you roll this one, it kind of increases the number. I guess it's quite good for the for the for the, like elder people who maybe don't who have a glasses for driving. So, hmm, kind of looks cool. Is it bigger now? Wait, let me just. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let me just check this one out. No, it's the same. This one's the same. Then the voice commands don't work in Croatia. And then you have the pages for the radio here. Now let's get to this screen. Um, and th this is, there's no home button. It's like menu here. We can have multiple pages. And this is the driver's assistance, which I, by the way, forgot to show you on the other car. But I believe it was the same. So you have the lane, um, departure lane warning, not lane assist. Um, you don't read the speed limits and it has the driver monitoring system. If you press on one of these, just goes into the options. Radio. Um, on the top, there's a pull down menu. You have a uh, switch screen off. You can add here, I don't know, traffic. Switch off the screen. Virtual cockpit. Oh, okay, that's the way where you can see. I thought it should be option, but see, now it gives you the option of like having a classical one, view one, and view two. So like in this one, you can like um, have distance traveled or acceleration audio. Um, like, you know, you can have the radio and then maybe um, something similar. So you can play with those. Uh, this brings you to settings and a section about virtual cockpit. Actually, the same. So, uh, yeah, the other car didn't have this infotainment. So this one has little extra options. It has a bigger screen. It looks better. But you have to use this touch button. So it's your choice. Back to the radio. Let's. Uh, you can use this one for the volume. I can't play for too long. I have to keep speaking so the algorithm gets fooled. But it's not a really true way to show you the sound. Or not, not even the the microphones of the phones are not that good. The sound of the basic speaker is decent, but um, if there's going to be an option, just do the upgrade. If you want more quality sound, you can have station lists here, uh, FM, Bluetooth, uh, stuff like that, and station logs details here. Um, I'm gonna be try brief here and the sound settings are here so you can play with those uh you can play with the position i think the other car had only for the front volume for the announcements and so on and then these settings here for the tones and the clicks if you want that but i think it's more cooler without that um media uh sources uh usb or bluetooth smart you can have the mirror screen you have the apple carplay so I would have to use the cable. Um, I think there should be an option with wireless, but it just doesn't work. Then their phone, you can connect that. Uh, so let me just, sorry, I'm gonna have to mute that one. Okay, like that, mute, 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 mute. Okay, sorry. I just don't wanna get a copyright strike because I won't be able to make a living then. Um, so over here are all your shortcuts, lights. In front ambient lights, this is just for this one. It's really hard to see, but it's on. And um, the rest is for the cluster and so on. Um, over here in the settings, you have those settings. If you press on the car, these are on the bottom. Uh, pressing on the car brings you to vehicle status. We can check the TPMS. You had here driving data. So this was my since start, six liters. And then uh, this is the salesperson's 7.5 and 7.3 since refueling. I assume this is mostly in the city, so that's why the consumption is high. You can see it when I go on the open road, it just starts uh, lowering. And virtual cockpit uh, settings here. There are 
menu settings for the here so over here you can have the screen uh, stuff a language and so on now air condition this is the air condition uh, you can choose air care to filtrate the dust you can choose the air below direction and then in that case the climate is not automatic it's manual but uh, you can choose here to automatic you can choose to switch it off uh, here high medium or low setup an ac on or off um, and you can synchronize only on the screen at the both ends so this is a dual climate zone setup and you can see here so then you have to synchronize up there um, another annoying thing is the fan speed so if you want that on low you're gonna have to go there or you can go to automatic um, it's nice to have physical knobs this is the max below on the front the frost rear and this is the menu so if you're on on radio and you press the menu on the bottom it thinks the menu it doesn't go out you can press off to turn it on or off and um, you can close the air circulation on the top but for the air direction you have to go to the touch screen so that's a little bit uh, downside but still I prefer to have those instead of like on the Volkswagen Polo it's capacitive touch buttons they're really annoying uh, this is a lot easier okay um, and that's the whole infotainment there's really no details here now uh, for the end my camera is the iPhone 13 Pro camera um, it's probably gonna stop filming I'm gonna demonstrate the Apple CarPlay so once I plug this in and go here so sorry working but it interrupted the video if I press here you can see the Apple CarPlay now uh, it's an automatic we are in a shade, so there's a sensor on the top here. So it goes into dark mode. But if you're on automatic and there's sunlight, it's gonna be on uh, day mode. You can switch this and then it's gonna be on the night mode. So that's a little hack for the ways, uh, particularly. And the resolution could be a little bit better. From the eye distance, it's okay. When you come a little bit closer, it definitely could be better, like on the Polo. Um, it's because I'm filming, not responding. It's very laggy. As you can see, uh, once I stop filming, it just becomes very responsive. You'll have to trust me uh, on that one, but <clears throat> still, it's nice to have Waze. So you don't have the navigation option because you can just use Waze or Google Maps, whatever your preference is. I think I prefer Waze mostly because of the speeding cameras and police reports. Uh, it comes in handy when you're in a foraging country plus you can see your gps speed which is um slightly off from the speedo uh, in the car because these the, this ones are usually like for one kilometer or two wrong maybe sometimes three depends uh, the higher the speed i think that's like maybe your margin error increases a little bit uh that's it that's um the whole car i don't think there's anything else i need to show you there is a little um simply clever trash bin here that you can get if you really uh, want that but uh, the rest is mostly the same disconnect this and this is kind of an annoying message now um i don't think there's really need to show you the petrol uh engine bay because it's exactly the same as in the salon headspace plenty on the front on the rear for me two meter tall it's a little bit tight uh, area for the knees is tight when I'm sitting on the front when there's an average person there's plenty of room so Fabia is quite roomy and uh, for an average person is for such a small car it's a super roomy car now uh, I have the new lights we're gonna see at night maybe I'll show you some difference but for the most part uh, I'm gonna switch that off I did show you the headlights uh, all the turn signals well the front turn signals look way better on the upgraded LED headlights so here's a little uh, night preview of the Fabia well it's actually sunset not night but close enough uh, because I'm limited with the time 
You can see the front lights, they're actually more cold white in person. Uh, rather than on the camera, it gives it a little kind of green tone. And this is the rear. And to show you the cargo, that's the illumination. Rear illumination, white LEDs. And to jump inside, switching to wide lens. And if I press the just the ignition, you can see everything illuminates white. This goes yellow. This is green, and it's quite night, uh, quite nice ambience. Uh, you can see now the light there, and you can see the AC. Uh, very nice. And the graphics are quite sharp. I think this one's a little bit sharper than this one, but uh, it's pretty good. And uh, I didn't forget, uh, there's no light in the glove compartment, unfortunately. Now, if you like the video, be a cool person, smash the like button, leave your comments below, also helps you a lot with the algorithm. And uh, if you want to see more reviews, subscribe to the channel, it's completely free, and click the little bell to get notified when I upload new videos. And uh, as always, stay safe at home and uh, on the road. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.